What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's game week 22 transfer tips. Now, it has been a little while since I made an FPL video. Part of the reason is because we've had a bit of a break and I thought it'd be good to take some time off. But also, the reason for that break is the FA Cup and Carabao Cup fixtures that needed to be played. And the results of those games are going to be quite important to what we do next in terms of transfers. So I wanted to wait for as many results as possible. For example, Man United and Leeds both going through in the FA Cup means double game week 22 is confirmed on man united and newcastle both winning their first legs in the carabao cup makes them very likely to get to the final and if that happens they'll both blank in game week 25 and the reason that's even more important is because newcastle played brighton in game week 25 and it was possible that brighton might have had another fixture rescheduled for that week but now they've beaten liverpool in the fa cup that can't happen so if newcastle gets to the final they'll blank and so will brighton so it's really important to get this information before we start talking about transfers we've not got 100 of the information we need right now but we have more than if i'd made a bunch of videos last week so that's why that's not happened even the fa cup fifth round draw will be quite important and that is tonight so for in terms of like a blank and double game we update video and stuff like that i will probably do that tomorrow instead but in this one we're going to talk about some transfers both in and out whether they're good moves bad moves all that good stuff if you enjoyed the video give it a like hit that subscribe button and let's jump into it all right, let's start off with Gabriel Martinelli. He has been quite heavily sold so far this week. I think there's two reasons why that is happening. Number one is probably a little bit of points chasing. So Martinelli hasn't done that well the last couple of game weeks. And players like Nketiah and Odegaard are doing really well. So people want to make the switch. And then reason number two is Trossard is sign. And there's a worry that he will reduce Martinelli's minutes. Now, I think for a lot of people... The Trossard signing is being used as an excuse to points chase, but I also think it's not necessarily a bad move. It's just very much a luxury transfer that most people don't need to make. Like, bearing in mind we've got double game week this week, there's a double game week in 23, there's blank game week in game week 25 to contend with. That's a lot of transfers to be using. Is Martinelli a key issue for your team? That's what you should be thinking. Now, when we look at Trossard, very versatile attacker, could probably play anywhere in that Arsenal attack, but his primary position is going to be where Martinelli he plays now i don't think martinelli is getting benched anytime soon i think for the next five to eight game weeks we are going to continue to see as long as there's no fitness issues or anything like that martinelli odegaard saka behind Inketia. obviously jesus maybe if he comes back but right now that's going to be the main four that doesn't mean that trossard's not somewhat of a risk i, I almost liken it to kind of veg course with martial not quite as extreme but if if martinelli does have an ever so small knock then Arteta might just not risk him, whereas before he may have done, and Trossard could come in. Likewise, while I don't see Martinelli getting benched, he will probably have his overall minutes reduced. So if he was getting 80 to 90 minutes every single week, maybe it's now going to be 75 to 85 or 73 to 83 because he can bring Trossard on instead. And yes, that's only a small reduction in minutes, and usually that wouldn't be enough to make a transfer. But in this case, maybe it is worth doing. So that's something to think about. In terms of actual return, Turns. he's only had three since the world cup i think uh, odegaard for example is on six now i checked the expected goal involvement for the midfielders i didn't uh, put in Ketter in, but he is just a very good option if you want to go for him and between saka marcelli and odegaard Marseille did have the least amount of returns, but in, in terms of expected goal involvement, it is very similar. I actually think that Marseille was at the top, so it's not like he has suddenly become a bad option, which is why for most people, I think you probably keep him. I've even seen people talk about getting rid of him for hits. I, I don't know. To me, that just sounds crazy. I'm not planning to do that anytime soon, but I have thought about just getting rid of him for free because I look at those fixtures and think, Obviously, Martinelli is great value, especially if you've got him at six minutes. If you don't think he's going to get benched anytime soon, then definitely you should probably keep him. But that being said, Arsenal are very important to us right now. They're best team in the league. They're attacking really, really well. Like they, Every game they play and you expect them to score a few goals, unless they're playing Man City, of course. They've got the double game week in 23. They also don't blank in 25. And straight after, it's Bournemouth and Fulham. And that is why I come back to the original point I made that I don't think it's a bad transfer. That for those next six weeks and beyond... You want the three best possible uh, Arsenal options going. Right? I think a triple up on Arsenal is almost non-negotiable. You should have three Arsenal if you can. Obviously, it's up to you which ones you go for. 
But if you wanted to swap Marseille because you're worried about him having a slight reduction in minutes to get Odegaard, who's probably not going to be affected at all, or even Nketi to take up a forward spot, I think that is perfectly a perfectly reasonable transfer. But again, for most teams, I don't think you can afford to do it, right? So if I look at my own team, for example... Um, for game week 25, Trippier might blank all three of my Man United players, so that's already four. Uh, Patterson's still injured, so he wouldn't play. And I've got to deal with Greenwood because he's on the bench and he won't play in game week 25. If he does, it'll only be a few minutes off the bench. So I've potentially got six players to deal with. Is Martinelli to Odegaard or Martinelli to uh, Enketia a big priority for me? Probably not. Obviously, the first time I see Martinelli get benched, then I would probably panic a little bit and maybe look to get rid of him. But right now, I just don't see that happening. So if you're in a better position than me, maybe you can afford to do it. Like one move that I've looked at is Martinelli to Bailey uh, to have that option off the bench in game week 25 and then Greenwood to Enketia. That solves two issues for me. And I could do that, but I do think it's a huge luxury move that I don't necessarily need to make. Look, potentially, game week 23, two fixtures together. Maybe Trossard will start one of them. But I don't know. Arsenal fans, let me know in the comments below what you think. I personally think Marseille keeps starting. Trossard maybe gets used in Europe. And yes, he's a bit of an issue, but not enough to make the transfer. But then again, if your team set looks good and you just want to make the move, get Odegaard in or Enketia and just be done with it because they've got great fixtures on a double, I do think it's a perfectly reasonable transfer to make. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We're finally here, the moment that I've been waiting for for weeks. We can stop pretending that Almiron is essential for our FPL squads. He hasn't got goals and assists recently, so people are frustrated with him. Over 350,000 transfers out. And obviously, there's other issues there for Newcastle. They're probably going to blank in 25. They've got Liverpool and Man City in 24 and 26. Although, to be honest, Newcastle will probably score a few goals past Liverpool because they've been awful. Um, and Isaac's obviously back now. St. Maximin is there too. So there's a bit of competition. But for me... It's the same issue as all along, right? And the reason I didn't pick him, this isn't like an I told you so, but it's just trying to explain what I was thinking at the time. It's not that he's a bad value player. Even without recent goals and assists, he's only 5.8 million. I don't think he's that bad of an option. He gets to play Bournemouth in game week 23 as well. The key thing is he takes up a midfield spot at a time when there's lots and lots of good midfielders, especially if you're on a 3-4-3. I know some people uh, did it to get three premium attackers, and to be fair, they've probably done better than I did anyway. Way. but ultimately I think that's the issue for me you're coming up to a fairly bad run of fixtures a possible blank and there's just better midfielders out there especially with a double for Man United and Leeds so I think it is probably the right time to get rid of him and I'm sure over the next few weeks we might see a little bit more of a reduction in his minutes as well I would say if you are looking to downgrade because obviously he is great value at 5.8 but you've also got March and Matoma at Brighton they're probably going to blank in game week 25 as well so it's a little bit tough to kind of justify bringing them in like if we look at the Brighton fixtures it is annoying I hate these situations in FPL where you feel like you can't get a player because of a blank even though the fixtures are really good but they have got but like it's tough. Bournemouth at home, Fulham at home in 22 and 24. Very, very good fixtures. Brighton will score a few goals in those. And they'll probably do well against Crystal Palace away. But if you use one transfer on Almiron to a Brighton midfielder, you've then probably got to get rid of them again in game week 25. You can obviously bench three outfield players. But you're also going to have Man United players, Newcastle players, etc. to contend with. So I don't, think it, I don't think it's an awful move. But I just think you're going to quickly have to get rid of them again. Or start making other transfers you probably don't want to. But with Almiron, I don't think there's too much more to say. I think there is going to be a bit more competition for his place now. For his minutes. So that might be an issue. But for 5.8 million, I still think he's quite good value. I just think he's taken up a midfield spot and I'd want to get rid of him. So with the blank coming up, the difficult fixtures. Yeah, no mistake. Time to get rid, I think. So before I started recording this to talk about Mares, I was telling myself, do not say the words Mares is nailed on. Just don't say it. And to be fair, he's not. But he does look very much first choice right now. And that can change very quickly as a Man City player. We've seen that before. Uh, like, it wouldn't be a complete shock if he missed one of the next two to three matches. Like, in the double game week for 23, he may only start one of them. But for 7.7 .7 million, he is becoming quite difficult to ignore, especially given what he's done recently. And there is some points chasing going on here. Absolutely. I'm not 
being a massive hypocrite after what I've just said about Arsenal players. Um, but he does look good for 7.7 .7 million, especially when you consider the other Man City players. Now, this is more for people that aren't already tripled up. But if you look at it, Haaland, great. Most people have got him. De Bruyne in isolation is still a good option. I know a lot of people are going to sell him for Fernandes this week. Perfectly okay with that. But in isolation, for the double game week, then Forrest and Bournemouth away, De Bruyne is good. But who do you go for that third spot? I think if you haven't already got Edison, you're probably not going to buy him, especially given what Kepper has done recently. So then you're looking at a defender... But as a lot of people have been pointing out, where is the upside there? Especially when you can't guarantee starts. I know Akanji has started a lot. Some of that was because of injuries and stuff like that. And to be fair, Stones being out definitely helps Akanji. But Diaz is back now. And there has been one game since the restart that Akanji didn't play. Then you look in the other positions. Laporte... Or Ake can play left centre-back. And Pepper's played right footers there as well. Although, again, that was when John Stones was fit. And we'll have to see how long he's out for. Lewis has started a few games, but he keeps coming off before 60. Carl Walker can play there as well. So can Akanji if, if Pep wanted to. And then you look on the left, you've got Ake, Laporte. Even Cancelo could play a game. He's not an FPL option at all, but he could play a game. I just don't see enough upside and enough attacking threat there necessarily. Like, if you could guarantee me Laporte was going to start the double game week and 24 25, I'd love him because he is good in the air. But I just think if you're buying a, man, a third Man City player right now, you probably could do a lot worse than just going for Myers. And I say that as someone who is on the triple up. And if I, I can just show you my team, you probably already noticed it before. I've got Edison in goal, and I've got Ake, and I've got Haaland. And look, Ake may start three in the next four. But if I can't rely upon it, I just don't know if I need to keep him. So I'm actually considering freeing him up. I was considering that before he got benched in the last game anyway. But that's helped a little bit as well. And then just having that third spot free to either go for De Bruyne or Mares, And depending on who I want to sell and how much money I've got... It could just be Myers that comes in. So I think he's a perfectly good option to bring in, knowing that he could get benched at any time. I don't think you necessarily need to do it in game week 22. You could just wait for 23. But unless we see something different from Man City uh, you know, against Spurs, and I just don't see any reason not to bring him in, especially if he starts that game. In the FA Cup against Arsenal, that was... You can't say full strength because everyone's got a different opinion on Man City's best team. But you would say that is what Pep Guardiola thinks of his best 11 right now, at least the 11 that he wants to play, there or thereabouts. And again, it was Grealish, Haaland and Mahrez. No Foden, no one else starting on that right wing spot. So yeah, I think he looks pretty good. I'm probably talking myself into a, a little bit because of his 19-pointer and stuff like that. But for 7.7 .7 million with the upside he's got it's not really much of a risk. And it's not like you're giving up loads of other really great Man City players either. So I'm actually going to leave that one now. I know there's loads of other players to talk about, the double game week options for game week 22, how to navigate the blank game weeks that are going to come up, chip strategy and all that kind of stuff. I'll cover it in the rest of the videos this week leading up to the deadline on Friday. Obviously, we'll have the game week preview, so you'll be able to ask questions as well. If you've got anything for that, leave them in the comments below. It will all be covered, so do not panic. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Ready, and I'll catch you again tomorrow.